Welcome back to this all LPL World semifinal, Invictus Gaming versus FPX. And I'm going to take a quick moment to tell you a story of FPX's jungler, Tien. It was 2015 in the good old city of Tallahassee when we saw the first ever MSI take place. And in that tournament, we saw the first LPL champion in a major event. You always wonder what ripples hoisting that championship would have in the next generation of dreamers. And you get that answer with FPX's Tien. Excellent grades doctors for parents, and bound for a prestigious university, seeing those images a world away of Clear Love hoisting that chip inspired that dreamer to start his trek into pro play. He'd start that journey in the Challenger scene with Young Miracles, an organization known for promoting all the best young talents in the scene, Ming on RNG, and the jungler he had come to replace in Ning, who went to IG. Tian would create a reputation as a smart, facilitating jungler with a great understanding of playing through his mid lane in night. And that would be recognized by Suning, who uh, picked up both those players and attained the best attributes. Sadly, experience trumped, and while he showed great traits, he'd be on the bench for the majority of the year watching that slim opportunity he had sail past him. He wouldn't let that happen again, Picked up by FPX with a chance to play through yet another super carry. He'd rise into an exceptional star, an MVP candidate, and an all LPL first team jungler. He burst onto the big stage as one of the best junglers in the world. A few steps away from succeeding Knight yet again, or at least Ning yet again, but this time as the next world champion. All right. There you have it. It's time. I'm hyped. Tian. And the LPL champions are on the verge of a massive victory. And with that, IG, our defending world champions, are on the back foot, down a series, staring at match point 2-1. But what I love about this story is how we are now seeing the new generation come yes. and challenge. And I, of course, Balant. Of balance. <laughs> uh, Ning <laughs> was only a world champion last year, but you're seeing these new players constantly challenging the way we see the game, challenging the way we approach. And Tian, especially after his game three performance, where it feels like he's now really online, he's feeling himself in the series. We've seen the growth that he's made, and he finds a team that enables him. And now he's only one game away from having an opportunity to be crowned world champion. And they really have to. And I'm talking about Invictus Gaming here. Need to formulate a strategy that limits Tian. Mm. Limits Tian and of how he's playing through Doombi because that's what finally dictated the last game. Because for the whole series, we just saw, no, I'm not going to say randomness, but a lot of team fighting and the laning phase didn't matter all too much. But Doombi is basically finding his moments, impacting the entire map in a wondrous ways because of how Tien is playing. And then Tien and team fights is taking over off his Kiana. Not just Tien though, right? If we look at FPX and Champion Select, there are a lot of questions still remaining about what is the right strategy to take against this team? Because the plethora of unique champions at their disposal ha has been on display so far today. And we know that there is still more in the tank. And majority of these champions have been helmed by Doinby. And that's the guy who I really want to focus on right now. I had a lot of questions coming in for Doimby. I said, if he is in meta right now, FPX can be the best team in the world, but I didn't think that he would be. I thought that Doimby was going to get shoved out, but he's proving today that he will just break the meta. He'll lock in Nautilus mid every single time, and no one is able to stop him, including one of the best mid laners, if not the best mechanical mid laner in the world with Rookie. And while it is a 2-1 lead for Fun Plus, we do have to recognize the back and forth nature of the series. We did hear Deficio pointed out, FPX has looked more in control in the early game, but these games have devolved to a degree, and they really are coming down to the team fight phase more than anything. Devolve is <laughs> Devolve. <a good> word, <laughs> right? Yeah, it's been pretty wild. It's crazy because I come out of most of these champion selects, and I'm like, well, I actually just like Invictus Gaming's comp a little bit better. I think they challenge a lot of what FPX has in the laning phase, but the game is not about the lane. It's just so much about how these team fights are coming through. And as you can see, like, IG just has to out team fight. And it's becoming a tough task. And that was always one of the thorns in Invictus Gaming's side. They did shore it up when they finally hoisted the uh, champion, or excuse me, the Summer's Cup. But the thing is, is, we were talking about this behind stage. When you look at FPX, this is brother than ours. This is like, don't you dare talk bad about my man. Mm -mm. I will die for his honor. No man is left behind. Like, it is just so synced up in its teamwork. Whereas Invictus Gaming is like, every man for himself. The fights are bloody, they're messy, but you have these abilities to just go full Rambo. 
it comes down to what we were talking about at the beginning of the day. You have the greatest solo queue team to have ever existed in IG versus the greatest team, a team that is greater than the sum of its parts that knows how to work together. So when we look forward and we look towards how do we make another game a reality for IG, it all comes back down to best enabling your solo laners. How do you find Rookie and the Shy and how do you put them in a position to carry? Because we know they can do it. We know they're more than capable. We can see the arena is lit yeah. up. Uh, Vettius has already answered the question, how does IG IG push it to a game five. They've got to do it through their solo laners. They're looking for those stars to put up the big numbers and push for defending their title. It's do or die for the reigning champions. Let's see if they can force a game five. As we jump into the draft, Invictus Gaming have elected Blue Side. Immediately banned out Renekton Rise, Pantheon, and Akali are the answers. And show me Kiana, Trevor. Behind door number three. They can also first pick if it. If it's not banned, that first pick also Rookie's work. been pretty monstrous on that champion, and it is banned away. Don't have to be so smug, Mr. Koblar. So what is the answer? What raises in priority now? I mean, Kaisa is still open. Zaya has been open. And That's Kragas, Kaisa, yeah. obviously. I mean, Kragas has been the first pick uh, for IG before. Uh, in this case, though, they do just want to lock in the best AD carry. And I was going to bring up kind of a second option for IG in this game. They know they're not going to lose the solo lanes. You could actually try and draft a super strong bot lane where Jackie Love becomes the main carry. That's how you made it to the World Championship in the first place. And then you go into these late game team fights looking towards him. And I think that's what they're signaling here with the Kaiser pick. And once again, FBX throwing down the challenge here. First picking the Nautilus because they know Invictus Gaming will pick it for support if left open. Pairs so well oh, with the Kaiser. That's the Kale you wanted. Or you talked about this, Kobe, how we go to the late game anyway in most of the games. Kaiser and Kale has been a great combination. You know, Kaiser jumps in, gets the Kale ulti onto her, you can't burst her down, and she will just destroy your team. IG, they're listening and they're learning. They're saying, we will play for late game more than early game. I've also been watching so much of the shy solo queue, just because he's such a good individual player. And his Kale, he. He plays so well in getting to the mid game. The changes to this champion where now gets ranged at the level six and makes it a lot easier to bridge Yo, that Kragas. mid game take has Kragas. really, really enabled it. Oh, they've really valued the time game so hard, so highly for the lane here. I think Gragas could have been an amazing pick because it's such a strong champion also against Kale. Agree with the Gragas, but you know what they're thinking, right? Varus by himself without a safety net is just low mobility, easy target. And of course, we jump into phase two. Support champions have found themselves banned out a lot during the second phase of bans throughout the course of the game. With the Nautilus stolen away, Leona denied as well. Now some of TN's junglers are being removed. I just want to highlight also like the, the Olaf pick, why I think it makes a lot of sense for IG, because they know now they're drafting a bit more scaling. They need a super strong early duelist who can kind of bridge them into the mid to late game. They want to get out of the early game with the Olaf here protecting the lanes. Also, I have played this with Kale. It's insane. I mean, it's almost the levels of the old uh, pre-nerf karma with Olaf. He gets sped up. He has the extra threat of the Kale ultimate on top of him. It, it just allows the Olaf to be fully aggressive and fully damage and dive oriented for the entire game rather than falling off. Well, we'll see if it works out in terms of the combination. And a little surprise, it was Lee Sin and Rek'Sai banned away. Gragas open and available yeah. and not prioritized okay. until the say, very last second. Like, the reason I really like it against Kale specifically is Kale often looks at these team fights where you are gathered as a team and you are in range of an ulti and then you can time it very well if you are the one playing Kale and you can start the fight. But Gragas disrupts that so well with his ulti. He can really mess up the combo from IG. Yes, okay, a matchup against Olaf is not easy for him, but still felt like the better pick. Also to get more engaged on the side of FPX. Yeah, Gragas definitely one of the most skill-intensive jungle champions. Uh, that, that's why you can see it's so highly prioritized at the highest skill level, because it can make that big difference. There's the Rakan, though, actually, for Balon and for the initiation. All of these users now are very good recipients of the Kale ultimate. Uh, so we'll have to see. The Shia can only pick Ooh, and choose. Nice. Galio for the mid lane right here. So they have, like, so much dive potential. Olaf rushing in there, Kaiser jumping in with ulti, and then Galio on top of that. I'm giving a golf clap now, Deficio, because 
Game after game, we have seen Invictus Gaming prioritize lane matchup, yep. lane matchup. And yet, they go fight at the Dragon, they fight the early five on fives. Now in draft, they are prioritizing more of those AOE ultimates, more of the possible team fighting. I still think they need to buy some time for the Shy, but once you get to that mid game with this comp, it is incredibly effective. 100% agree here. While on the side of FPX, a lot of that late game damage, we look at the Gangplank and, and we look at the Varus. The Varus should never be allowed to just sit there and auto attack. You're either in the belly of Tom Kench, not dealing damage, or you're trying to run away from four champions that flies in your face, either with insane movement speed or multiple dashes. This is not an easy game for LWX to play. He needs to do something in the early game, get priority, that way, get quickly to his two item spikes so he can actually use that around objectives. Otherwise, I fear that he will not have the impact he wants, and FPX might then run out of damage in the late game, unless Kim Goon can have an insane game on well, GP. If there was a team that had to play around their bottom lane and send resources down there, Fun Plus Phoenix is definitely one of them. We've seen them do it time and time again in the past. Uh, has everyone here played Pick'ems? Pick them? Do you know there's only 34 people that still have perfect points for Pick'ems remaining? Only one of those people has Fun Plus Phoenix listed as a world champion. And this Fun Plus Phoenix roster is one Nexus kill away from a world finals appearance in Paris and from eliminating the defending world champion in Invictus Gaming. Let's see if they can do it. Whether or not Invictus will push us to game five, I'm secretly, no I'm not, I'm openly hoping Invictus push us to game five because this has been a fantastic series. Let's keep our eyes on the early game. FPX, two out of the last three games, we're invading and we're challenging IG early. And as Kobe highlighted in the draft, we got exactly what we wanted from IG. More team fighting, more late game. I also want to highlight they're running three TPs now. In the other games, one of the soul laners have been running a different summoner most of the time. It made it slightly harder as well to react when FPX were constantly moving to the sides. Now it's full on. We, will ca we can match you in the early game, or we will try at least. And then we get to team fights, and we have so many ways of reaching your backline. I think blue side has actually made such a big difference here for I IG. I think they're much more confident coming into this one. All right, defensive ward is up uh, for FPX. Let's see. Because you have an Olaf, you're always expecting early priority here. The axe spam is insane for level one. But they also have their whole dual lane on the bottom half of the map. So FPX would be lying in wait with a numbers advantage. FPX holding on. This could be disastrous for IG. Wow. Invictus move forward. Okay, Rookie will be the first one to step on the ward. It's now been cleared out. I didn't see if uh, IG had noticed anyone from FPX. Crisp waiting in wings. This is a four versus three. Yeah, very important sweeper there. Ning actually still gets caught. All right, gets rooted up. TNR comes over. That's a body slam. Defensive flash already. The Olaf that wanted to get ahead concedes first blood. Fun plus Phoenix. Do they flash? Yes, they do. TNR continues to chase. Now there's some defense here from Rookie. 200 hit points to burn through on the shy, but nobody else supports it. The dredge line will not find its target, but FPX get first blood. And disaster strikes. As, as we as we set it up there, going over the ward, I thought they had avoided it when they found it with the sweeper, but they still go in and Ning face first into four members. They had already seen Varus tra uh, trailing behind on the bottom half of the map here to Fischio. They're clearly not expecting Tom Kench to be here too. They say like worst case it's a 3v3, but Ning still checks on his own. So even if Tom Kench was not here, he would still face check and have to run away instantly. Tian gets the red buff and just instantly goes over the wall. Such a greedy invade after you kill the ward you showed the enemy team we're here okay so they actually did not have confirmation of seeing the Varus on the bottom half of the map but that is just playing right into it oh here we go okay he has no flash that's, and uh, that's, uh, we got the first assist solo there, my so. friend yeah so that was uh the shy being solo killed by Gimgoon Uli. Yes, early advantages, gotta factor that in, but all credit to Gimgoon for managing it to make it work. Yeah, definitely credit deserved there. Uh, Gangplank passive, by the way, should not be underestimated early on in the game, and he makes advantage of it there. Getting level two, flashing on him because he knows with the level one invade, Deficio, there was no flash for Kale. And man, imagine you're down 2 1 in this series. You go into the next game completely changing your plan. It's not about hard winning lanes anymore. It's about playing slow in the early game. And your first invade completely fails. And then your top laner dies instantly. IGF to just 
keep calm right now and actually stay mentally in this game. Let's see what happens around the blue buff. Might be another fight. Tian is going to check now. He knows he has double ward on him. A lot of pressure. Ning and Valon now being contested. That's a knockup. Actually misses absolutely everybody. Crisp and Tian split between the uprights. Jackie Love uses the Q. They continue to retreat. And Victor's Gaming is in so much trouble. Ning's below 100 hit points. He's got double buffs available to him. Flashes Q for Q LWX now. and Crisp is there. The undertow will slow them down. Now Valon's the target. He's going to flash defensively. Jams away to the teammate. Now Tian will not find the body slam. Invictus, how did you escape with your lives? Well, let's use every single summoner to get out. Look at Paolan, look at Jakulov. No flashes bot lane now. Right. Doing B engages in mid. He does indeed. Dredge line will manage to catch himself one gigantic bird. Rookie's able to walk away with his life. It's a 500 gold lead in favor of Fun Plus Phoenix. And the combo with the barrel from the brush and instantly flashes with the level two. Yep. That's a repercussions of the level one invade. Burning his flash there. Didn't have any way to escape. And a really good job of Gim Goon preying on that CD difference. Meanwhile, you incur another cost. You talked about it. Going for the invade on bottom side was yeah. incredibly greedy, and it cost Invictus Gaming all of their bottom side summoners, all of their pressure here. And you, you can't play the lane at the moment if you're IG because you know Doing B can roam down, you know Enemy Jungler can be here. And that means that LWX and Chris were getting all the help they needed. Look. You could see a small roam there from Rookie, but besides against it, the recall has not been interrupted yet from Tian. He does finish it. But you said in draft, gentlemen, you wanted to see FPX getting that bottom lane ahead. After they got some early kills in the upper half of the map, they're using that to try and push it down, and LWX putting pressure on that tower. And once again, we're seeing the intelligence of FPX as a team on display. Even in one where they're not going for the offensive invade for level one, they know, seeing an Olaf, there's a high likelihood of a level one invade from IG. And so they actually keep their support on top side, not showing information, and are rewarded so heavily for it. How can IG play back, though? This, this is not a lost early game here. Ning still on the attack. And he's one level above right now. Can deny the camp here. Two members actually coming over the wall. All right, Rookie's going to land just inside the camp. The Krugs now will be challenged. And as you mentioned, Kobe, it's not a lost early game, but it is disadvantaged for now. Rookie and Ning trying to regain the advantage. The Winds of War have pulled this minion wave shy on the verge of unlocking that ultimate. I don't quite know what his experience level is. And now Kim Kuhn's the target. No flash available to him, but Rookie's got his. See what happens around the dive here. Tian is here to defend. All right, Rookie's going forward. Teleport starts to get channeled. Kim Kuhn is blown up underneath the tower. LWX now draws the fray. Ning is the next target. He manages to pick up the kill. LWX picks up the blue buff as well. That's going to be so painful when he gets back to lane. That does cost FPX the bottom part of the map. You can see Jackie Love should hard shove right now. You immediately signal to Kaisa, yes, we did give back the kill on uh, Ning going down, but this is your time to grab a plate. It's also very fun to follow like the mid lane roams. Doing B went bot early, got one plate for it. That actually allowed Rookie to push out his lane so he could go top and do exactly this. Gets the kill here, very important for IG to get something. Ning will die on the way out and a flash was blown. But as you highlighted, Kobe, because they get a bit of farm and maybe one plate bot lane for Jakulov, they still gain something other than just one for one. Man, the tension is so high, but Invictus Gaming, they've managed to bounce back with the gigantic CS lead that Jackie Love has accrued for himself, as well as the kill. It is balancing out exactly deficits. Despite their horrible start, they still have fantastic, you know, scaling with Kaiser and Kale, and they just need to keep farming with these two. Jackie Love, he's going to be more than fine right now, as long as he doesn't actually get attacked by uh, Rome from Doing B in the next like one or two minutes when he's flashes still on cooldown, he shouldn't die. And then he can at least keep farming. But I'm kind of looking for that next play, if it is towards the bot lane. And I think that should be more bottom lane focus now uh, for, for Invictus Gaming, because uh, then, well, never mind. We're just going to see it right on your screen then. Don't have to go into any theory, Trevor. Olaf, very good at soloing early. Dragons, Ocean Dragon will give the Kale more sustain for the lane, especially to continue scaling up like the Fischio was talking about. And I love the fact that Rookie, he moved towards the river. Even if any shenanigans were afoot, he's got that hero's entrance to jump in support. And you know, after the awful early game, Invictus showed not only are they not tiltable, but think about the regional qualifiers who's had to go all the way to five games. These players in this team, 
They don't buckle when the pressure gets turned up to the highest. No, and, and now for FPX, the, the Vars Tom Kench lane are not getting any control. It's, it's not winning its lane. And, and we talked about how in the late game, against Olaf and Kaiser and Rakan all jumping towards LWX, it's super hard for him to play these fights. Let's see what happens around topside. Tian is around. Yeah, the Shine's got full summoners and ultimate available, so I think should be fine. Oh. Walk straight over the control ward. Tian's gonna be backwards. And if you look at the mini-map, Doonby's making his way north. There is a ward just in front of the Grom. Um, just for some vision, so FPX would know if anyone's coming through that way. And on the other side, if you look at the mini-map, Invictus Gaming, a line of control wards that allow them to set up that early uh, Ocean Drake earlier. Stops the push bot as well because you have no vision in river. You know Galio can ult in as well. Doing Beast TP is still on cooldown, so he can't join. They will only have the GP ult. Meanwhile, rookie here on Galio, one of the perfect champions to answer a player like Doing B. If he wants, Doing B wants to play a tank and roam around the map, then you play Galio. You wave clear and you have your ultimate to answer. See if he can actually get in range for a top though, because the range is not quick enough now. All right, barrel comes out. Judgment is divine for now, and it simply will not matter. A flawless tower dive from Fun Plus Phoenix. Yep, rookie actually covering bottom side with the invade from Olaf. So while he's bottom side and out of range of Galio ultimate, very good job from FPX using that window to make a successful dive, keep that Kale down, keep the CS low for the Shy, and try and stall. I read that correctly. One plate secured in the mid lane in favor of IG. I think two in the top lane in favor of FPX. Gimgoon's got flash available and is potentially diveable. Oh, this could be problematic. Ning is stepping forward. He's got flash. He's got undertow. He's got double buff. The undertow won't find a target right now. And the Shy actually makes the call along with Ning to back away. Well, you can just walk around now if you're Ning. Access. Stop him from... Uh from recalling. That's exactly what he does. Recall interrupt. Look at the mini -maps. Everyone's coming. Look. Yeah, everyone's coming. It's a party in the top lane. Ning, however, is now under some trouble. Ragnarok and Ragnarol flash forward onto LWX. The hero's entrance is going to bring Rookie into the fray. Invictus Gaming in the second fight. Now they turn their attention to the Shy. The Shy goes down because he had no ultimate available. Invictus Gaming are running for their lives. And I do not believe it that FPX have turned it around. The body slam onto Ning puts the damage down and Rookie gets the win. Of war. That was a three-man knocker from Bowland. Ning's trying to solo Tian, but he doesn't have enough time. And Rookie will get interrupted. He loses the teleport as well. And IG, they're just so slow right here. They're setting up for this dive for like 30 seconds, just throwing access, stopping the recall. All of FPX are either moving to top lane or saying, I have TP, I can join instantly. So when Jack Love is sitting bot without a TP, IG are outnumbered and they still end up taking the fight. Could have tried to run out with Ning, but he saw an opening to kill LWX and baits in the entire team. Once again, FPX in the early game, they are just smarter and they're responding so well. And look what this is gonna do for the rest of the game. They transition this into the Rift Herald. Now actually, Chris getting chased out of the river. Oh, the Undertow tagged him. It's going to allow the knockup from Baoland. The kill will be secured by the Shy. So a small gift to the Shy, but not necessarily game-changing just yet. And at the end of the day, you'll take anything if you're IG. Any any free kill plates. you can get. Absolutely the case, especially on a champion like Kale. That you just really got socks so for Christmas. Place. Great, I'll take it. Thank you very much. <laughs> can I have another sock, please? It's pretty cold in Berlin around Christmas time, so those socks are very valuable. Look. Repeat the gank. No flash for LWX. Barrel roll comes in. So much damage onto uh, Ning's Olaf. Now Barrel comes in. The support from Rookie. Invictus Gaming say if you don't get it right the first time, do it again. Oh! But it's donated. Tian reads the watch perfectly and escapes with his life to pick up a kill onto Baoland. Now Rookie's running away as Doombi and Chris were able to respond. Baited and outsmarted right there. Now Rookie is the one on the run. He is the Justice Punch. He's going to get oh, the, the address the connected. Now the Shy is looking for something onto Tian. Divine Judgment was used and it's not available for him. Rookie is going to get cut <laughs> down inside the river. The Shy picks up a kill between towers. Is. Tian gets that kill secured. 12 kills to 5, and we've gone full crazy. We've got full LPL here. Diver, tower diving as well. Now the Rift Out's going to come out. This is going to be a big cash in for FPX. Man, 13 minutes, 10 seconds on the clock. 
four plates secured in the bottom lane, three in the middle lane, two in the top lane, and there's still some time. LWX and uh, Crisp trying to do what they can to push this tower down. And it's just the, the slowest of minion clears right now from those undertoes. Yeah, they got their, their first turret bot lane. Jagalove is trying to get the one top and trade turret for turret. Uh, funny enough, he's just farming. <laughs> While everyone else is fighting everywhere, Jagalove is just farming for himself. Everyone else uh, rolled their characters on the PvP server. Jackie Love rolled on PvE. <laughs> <laughs> he's been killing off minions and towers, doing his work. All right, here's a look at the dive. And once again, this is the Kale Olaf combination I was talking about in Champion Select. Uh, you can see how much uh, presence it really brings to the dive. Even though they know Tian is here, Ning has full confidence. He ults, goes full off. They split both of them. That being said, LWX, such yeah, a good timing it. on the arrow. And then, can you get Tien. baited any harder? Look at look about that. Nerves of Steel, though, by Tien. I would have popped it on the last auto there, but he saves it with the extra regeneration from the potion. Survives under tower. But as you know, Deficio, there's a second dive that happens afterwards. Oh, yeah. In which Tien also tries to bait. Wait, so Tien, he clears, so he wants to start killing his jungle camps. And the shot actually just comes around the corner. He's like, ah, I got this clown. Did you see what I just did to your support? These teams going toe to toe. No, why did you walk back to you? What? Entertaining League of Legends on the planet. <laughs> when they played each other in LPL, we said this stat earlier 1.1 combined kills per minute. Right now, from games 1 through 3, 1.17. And the world's average is 0 0.78. And it might be another one of the cards as the Shy's getting some support from Ning, but they're not going to tower up oh, just yet. Ning oh, no, Bowerland I take this back. Coming. Bowerland's coming from the north. That's the Blast Cone taking. Gimgoon sidesteps Ooh. the knockup. Beautifully done. And he escapes with his life. I wanted to highlight this earlier when you mentioned the Galio pick, you know, matching, doing B. It was actually one of the things IG did in that series where they beat them 2-1 in the regular season. They took Talia. That was a big pick for Rookie to then match this. And that's exactly what they're trying to do with Galio. Rookie is roaming a lot now. He's ready with ulti as well. They're saying we can stop doing B from just snowballing our sides. In this game here, it's been so crazy with the early game as well that it's not 100% worked for IG, but we can see the idea they used in the past to beat them. That's what they're trying again. It seems to be the case. Now remember, Invictus Gaming, 3,000 gold down, two towers down, and Jackie Love has uh, transferred his server to the PvP one as he's staring down five members of Fun Plus Phoenix. Teleport coming in from the shy. Rookie steps forward, Winds of War, to try and clear out that wave. And the shy has got the TP available. He's got the Gunblade completed, and Victus are looking for an opportunity. Remember, Kale plus Kaisa, Kale plus Olaf. Yeah, that scaling. combination can be the difference maker even when you're down in goals. I mean, it has to be the difference maker here for IG because they're down 1-2 in this series. They tried in the fourth game to turn around and go more for late game. It needs to work. Ning is, he didn't get the message about, you know, scaling and want to play for late game. Like, he was from the get-go in there trying to fight people left and right. But he's also playing Olaf, and that his job is to get them past the early game. Ideally, not too far down in gold. And once again, I just want to give so much credit to FPX. With five members responding to the top side play, Tien baiting under tower, drawing the rest of Invictus Gaming in, then using that pressure. They don't stop there. They transfer it into the Rift Herald, into the top tower. They chain objectives using the Tom Kench Abyss of Voyage, then to even get mid lane as well. If you make a mistake like that versus FPX, versus this team, they punish you and take so much back. And the analyst desk was saying a little bit earlier, this is the new generation of uh, players and, and squad, the summer split champions. If they close this series out 3-1 and they're in advantage, they might be the most impressive number one seed coming out of the LPL in recent memory, Deficio. Yeah, it's about time, honestly, I think, for all the Chinese fans. They've, listen, they've been waiting for the first seed who could deliver, live up to the hype from what they had back in the LPL. Let's see if they actually close this one out. They are in a very good spot right now. Group five-man mid as well. IG have a lot of the tools to engage. Oh, my word. They've managed to catch out Bala, and he's in so much trouble. The Divine Judgment is used just to save the support. That's a flash forward into the Riptide for Doombi, and the Piercing Arrow won't find the target, and the Big Barrel doesn't either. Now, Fun Plus Phoenix have committed a lot to this play. The tower stands for a moment longer in the mid lane, and Invictus are looking for a potential re-engage. They get themselves a dredge line. That's a Ning. Oh, he's going to the Ragnarok. There's a hero's entrance just come down. Gimbu's already out. Now, Rookie's looking to chase forward. Protobelt's out. Winds of War not going to tag Tian. Invictus have not given up, and they've got themselves two more kills.
and they can push mid lane here. Dragon's at 45 seconds, so that timer's a bit desynced, and doesn't look like they can actually punish too much. Can they stop some recalls? They really need to chain this into a tower mid. Well, we keep saying this, IG, they have the scaling on their side. They will win in the late game against FPX and their five champions. So the fact they actually get two kills here and maybe a turn, it's so huge. Teleport is available on Doin B. Five seconds left on his respawn. I think they're setting up a possible play here from FPX. Look at that ward in mid. He can teleport on it. TP's up for Shy as well. Bowland's already down. They turn the attention to Chris. That's a two-man tour. Oh, the VS gets caught up. Ning gets the undertow. The dredge line won't find a target. And that's one more for Jackie Love. Ning gets a second before Jackie Love gets taken out. The Shy has joined the fray. He didn't use the TP. He's walked his way up. That was Doin B chasing down Ning. And this will be another kill back. Nine to 15. And the Drake is available for FPX. And yeah, they win the fight here, can get second Mountain Drake as well. That's so huge if they want to go for early Baron to try and force IG into more fights before we reach the late game. But Jakulov did get that one kill on his side. Two and a half items on the Kaiser. That's what we're really looking at in this composition as well. Tracking those summoner spells is so important versus this team. We could see it on the side here, and we could see the play coming, but Invictus push farther forward. FPX with the double teleport flank are able to find the extra kills, resulting in this mountain, which we're looking further into the game, and Baron will evaporate. Varus is yes, one of exactly. the best Baron killing carries. He's got the Blade of the Ruin King percentage damage, and that is gonna go a long ways towards their weight condition. When you play a lot of League of Legends, you have this idea in your head of like, when can we do Baron? When can the enemy team, enemy team do Baron? It's rarely at 20 minutes. Often you're like, nah, it's too early. It takes too long to kill it. it. It's too risky to go for it. But with double mountain, it just completely changes. A team can run to Baron at 20 minutes, 21 minutes, and just burn it down so quickly, it forces you to constantly keep vision around it and always be afraid of, can they rush it? And that's how FPX can keep forcing fights now and actually use their goal lead. Let's see where they take their advantage. Uh, Nash's Tooth was just picked up, by the way, for the Shy's Kale. He held onto that TP from the previous Dragon play, and the mid outer turret is still a target at 21 minutes. Now, Baolan is in a potential flank position. Hero's Entrance is available for Rookie. That's at least a hop and a dash and a skip away to safety. Chain of Corruption comes out. Ragnarok goes in. That's a multi man knockout. Boom. Invictus Gaming. They've lost the time. Think they need to get the kills. That's one done. They turn their attention to three. Number four is going to fall as well. Invictus are right back into it. Yep, they're going to finish off Gim Goon, and the Baron will be theirs as well. Quick shot. Quadra kill for the shot. Unbelievable turnaround in Victus Gaming. We're close enough to reinitiate. One tower has fallen. The second is on the cards, and with 20 second death timers, they can peel back to the Baron. They get so much gold right here, and we were just standing here looking at the map. We were actually pointing towards LWX and the lack of flash. We keep highlighting how he can't really play the team fights with the amount of people jumping towards him gets even harder without a flash and he was the one who started the fight he walked to the front look at this here after they find the two members lwx is calling let's take this one he's on ulting in from the front line they dash straight to him knock him up as well massive casualty coming down and he's not really able to deal damage yet it's not until he gets out of the belly from tom kench that he can shoot back but he's already low. Another fight. Yeah, on the cusp of being eliminated. Back top. Last IG, what's your move? And they made it matter. IG aren't done yet. They get knocked away by the barrel. That was fantastic from Tia. He split them up. The shy is untouched though, and so is Balan. Now they're moving forward. Jackie Love's getting all the heals. Divine Judgment is about to come off cooldown. The shy can continue chasing. Jackie Love's killer instincts up. He can dive forward. Give it a few more seconds, and he just might do it. Chain of Corruption saves him for now. Jackie Love, do it. Do it. Do it. There it goes. Divine Judgment from the defending world. World champions, and they want a game five. What changed from the previous game's Officio is draft. They draft four for 5v5. They smashed the 5v5. Gangplank ultimate from Gimgum does go back down. Can he get a miracle barrel steal? No. Smite on the other side. Big barrels. Barrel is going to get popped. Balan's going to try to siege move forward. Oh, this is so close. Balan is just going to zone them away. Secured by Jackie Love. This is a 20 stack Magi's, eight kill Kale now. Let's see it again. 
Still no flash on LWX, but he's the main carry. He's the one we're looking at to deal the damage here. Doombi actually gets a sick ulti, knocks up multiple members, but now Rookie. big taunt from Rookie. Epics are not getting enough damage back, and there's so many carries on IG. If you kill one, then the Shai just sits alone. He's barely touched in this fight, deals so much damage while everyone else will look into what Jakulov and FPX is why we said to get outscaled. They simply cannot match the damage from IG. Look at the cooldown on Shai's ultimate. They're just waiting for the second it comes off. And it's off. Boom. Jackie Love goes in. He gets the go word. Two kills extra for Invictus. 4,000 gold. Correction. 3,000 gold in the lead now is Invictus Gaming. They can balance out the towers. They've already done that. Baron is up for another two and a half minutes. And Fun Plus Phoenix need to try and hold on to as many structures as they can. But we've said it time and time again. And Tavisha, you've been screaming it. Scaling's on IG side. Now they've got the lead and they've got fully activated Team Comp. And we said after game two, we're going to get five games in this series here. Both teams just trading back and forth. Yep. Dash said he got a prescription for five game series. Looks like Invictus Gaming will fill the first half of that prescription. And the Shy is level 15, almost 16 right now on the Kale as well, on top of the stacked Medjai's, on top of the Rage Blade that he's probably building next. 700 gold bounty for the Shy, 400 gold bounty for Jackie Love. Both of them fully, fully online. And Rookie with the Hourglass and the Hero's Entrance is just waiting to find the right person to jump on. I mean, 30, what, 37 kills in 24 minutes already in this game. The inhibitor turrets not yet falling, but they're waiting for the minions to push forward. And we'll need to see if FPS can, you know, drop the ball in the now. Chain of Corruption comes out, but it's an Olaf. He doesn't care. Void Seeker goes out. Killer Instinct is available to Jackie Love if he wants to. Divine Judgment has joined the fray, but he's to bow land. That's not the right target. The Shy has gone down, but there is just enough damage to follow it up as the tower's been taken out. Now Rookie gets taken down, and FPX win the fight. Definitely a big mistake here, and another punish from FPX. The Kale Ultimate on Baolan leaving the fight there. That was definitely a misclick. It's okay to sacrifice your support in this comp. Everyone else will dive in after and kill the enemy team. So definitely agree here with Kobe. Don't have to use the ulti on him. <laughs> and that means that IG lose the fight. So we're going to take a look. How close was he to Jackie Love as it played out? I mean... Oh, it was just a retreat. He can yeah. easily do it, right? But I think yeah. also with the turret there, they weren't really sure if they should dive in and actually go for this or not. But he also just died very yeah, quickly. Yeah, it kind of felt to me like um, Balan stepped just on top of Jackie Love on the retreat. They could have been engaged with that ultimate. Uh, fun fact, at home, you can you cast your spells on the champion portraits by the side of your sc uh, screen there. Uh, it will be above your mini-map. No one has time for that in a big team fight, though. If you don't have time, then maybe you ult your support while he's leaving. <laughs> you can also uh, keybind it as well. If you know that you, yep. if you know you have two or one or two primary targets that you really, really need to hit. No one hit, has time for that in okay, that that binding on. <laughs> okay, so where does this give us? So the Baron is now thwarted. The inhibitor didn't go down. And there's another dragon in five minutes. Uh, in, in Mountain was picked up, I believe, IG during that replay. It's a 2,000 goal game. So obviously scaling still with IG, but execution still matters, as we have seen time and time again this series, Deficio. 100%. Still think when we're looking at the next fight here, it's that problem where you want to deal with first Ning diving onto you and then probably Jackie Love. And you kind of forget about the Shy then, who's just kind of standing there in the back, hammering away on whoever is right in front of him. So it's so hard because FX wanna, they wanna, they want to run back and defend their AD carry, but they also need to stop the Kale. I think the Gragas ulti is like the big thing I'm looking for, and that's why I highlighted this Gragas pick in draft. If you manage to separate the Shy from the team, I think then you can actually burst down multiple members on, 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 on IG. And this whole combo where you dive the backline just kind of stops. Kobe, did you hear Madrid a moment ago? Loud and, and clear, quick the shot. The Shy Loud hits level clear. 16. Vamos, Kale, as Madrid erupts. Great observer work again to highlight that moment as the wave was being pressured. 
Yeah. And then Mirage comes out, actually. Bowland is in trouble. He gets caught by the Dredge line. Now the Shy stepping forward. Divine Judgment is up. Invictus Gaming might be throwing away this advantage that they have accrued. Rookie still got the ultimate available to him. Ning is now coming in on the flank Ooh. of the Dredge line. Just misses that level 16 Shy. Ning escapes with his life, and Bowland gets plucked out of the air another time. They also got the flash here from the Kale. Can be very important in the next fight. Epic, good defense so far. Two fights in a row where IG are the ones messing up and getting caught out. These teams really like to keep you on the edge of your seat here. You th the team with the advantage, you're never quite sure if they're going to be able to set up properly and a good job by FBX forcing on the split there. They charge Bowland. They know that they don't have time to wait and let Invictus Gaming come to the inhibitor. Bowland is alive and he can make his way through the mid lane. His recall did finish from Ning and gentlemen, I think the term advantage means something different in the LPL because it doesn't seem to matter. Now FPX, they didn't get much vision around Baron. If you look at the minimap, waves are pushing heavily in favor of Invictus Gaming and now the Shy, he's starting to chase forward. The barrels come down though. Jackie Love and the Shy getting blown up. The Divine Judgment's available. What? How did you do this? Or Invictus <laughs> Gaming tilted. They've lost their carries. They've lost their damage. And they may have just lost the series. <laughs> that oh, Daniel Nick's running for his life with the Ragnarok. Bowline gets knocked up into the air, and FPX are peeling back to Baron. The Shy and Jagalov just walked in. Two members right there got instantly CCT and then turns with the body slam, and they burst them down. I, I think they got baited by seeing that recall go off, and Doin B then just teleports back. They kill him with no. Oh, this is an attempted Baron seal from He's gonna Ning. try. He won't be able to flash inside the pit. They've stopped. They've got enough damage to kill him. Five man <laughs> stack. Inhibitor secured by Rookie. Baron secured by FPX. An unbelievable mistake from the Shy and Jackie Love. Yeah, I want to see also if there was like a flanking TP coming in from IG or something. So they thought, okay, let's just walk forward. We will get them with the flank. In the end, they lose the two most important players on the team. Let's see. So they, they just saw the recall uh, completed, but then he just teleports right back here. And they, they AOE just turn on them. This is your two main carries, by the way. That's your late game Kaisa, your late game Kale, chasing into the fog of war. Yeah, no vision, no flash, nothing. I that is a question mark ping and a half. I am flabbergasted at Seven. the call. Seven <laughs> damage from the Shy. There was no flash for him and Jackie Love. Now with Baron, a small gold lead. Deficia, we've said so much, so often this, this game at least that IG Scaling's on their side, but with Baron buffs, Minions, is that enough for FPX to knock over the base? I mean, let's see how much they can get at least if they just want to go, you know, they can get the first turret for sure. They might go for the second one as well, but that's where IG can try and defend. Rookie is in the top lane without TP, so just, you can just keep going now. You might even try and set up a dive. Rookie's starting to recall. He's going to be a little late to the play. Gimgoon's got Cannon Barrage and TP. He's in the mid lane. And he's moving forward now. Rookie is got, has playing. got the ability. Bowland's coming in from behind. The quickness is available and combine it with the hero's entrance. That's a devour. This comes out. Hero's entrance comes out. Jackie Love gets the divine judgment. And Victor's Gaming wants to win this fight. Now the tower has fallen. They've turned this one around. Jackie Love has got a lot of uh, damage to work with, but not that much HP. Rookie goes golden for a while or two. But Fun Plus, they're losing the members. One, two, three. It's killed back in so close. It's dirty. The devour from Chris. FBX won the line. fight. FBX have won the fight. They've got Baron Empowered Minion. They might just win the game. They're going to keep going for it. Chris actually charges ahead. The inhibitor will go down. It is Shy versus FBX. Unbelievable. No flash available. No divine judgment. 30 seconds of time is what the Shy needs to buy. The defending world champions might just be eliminated by the LPL Summer Split champions. And the answer is not right now. Not FPX enough minions to push here. have backed away. But when we get the replay, Let's look at first, LWX kiting back that he's in the GA. And also look at the Shy specifically. He was not able to deal a lot of damage in the start of the fight. I want to see exactly why. Here's the flank from Bowland. Rookie just recalled, so they get onto the AD carry. Nice time catch play here from Crisp. And then let's see, Jagalov knocked into the wall. And then it's doing B's ulti that stops the Shy from moving in. And the G-Pill, so he zoned away almost the entire fight not dealing damage until now when he joins and multiple IG members are already low. And after ulting in Jackie Love, after the, the ult ends, 
the Kale explosion on him, he doesn't have the safety to auto anymore. He's on the wrong side of the team with no front line, and Gimgun just flashes on him. So, uh, once again, the two main damage dealers are unable to auto attack. Now, a big difference. No flash on LWX and no GA that he had in the last fight here. IG can try and do the same, reach the back line and kill him, but again, GP ulti, Doing B's ulti with the Nautilus and the Gragas ult. So many tools to zone away carries from IG. Look at the minimap. Double super minions for Invictus are going to be able to defeat the single super minion for now on the side of FPX. Banshee's Veil is going to be crucial for the Shy to get away from one of those abilities. Jackie Love gets caught up by TN's ult. He's able to escape. And they get the cannon barrage as well. Two minutes to Baron. Four minutes to Elder. Super's pushing in the bottom lane, and IG are not relenting on pressure. I think they need a force right now. Those are two very big teamfight ultimates. No Gragas or Gangplank ulti, and IG have everything available. Moving inside of the base. Dredgeline won't find the target. doombi has got his ultimate available, and they start chipping away at the inhibitor tower. Chain of Corruption starts to spread. Divide Judgment is not used. The shy and flash available too. Hero Zippers comes down. Jackie Love is at 50% HP, and he's starting to run for his life. Doombi is being melted by the Acadian Rain. Now Battleland is going to be the target of LWX. Rookie cannot move forward. Jackie Love is running for his life. Another lost fight. The Abyssal Void from Chris is going to thwart the escape. Jackie Love doesn't have the front him. line. FPX has the team fight win, and they might have just won the game. FPX are so good at starting these fights, they keep catching out the carries. It's LWX with the Varus ultimate. He snaps his fingers, and half the LPL teams left at Worlds disappear. Fun plus Phoenix are the summer split champions. They stared down the barrel of the defending world champions. The number one seed from the LPL, winning the all LPL matchup, three to one. Fun plus Phoenix eliminate IG and advance to the world championship finals. Players are ecstatic. The styles could not have been more different. And Fun Plus Phoenix are one series win away from hoisting the cup they stand beside right now. LWX starts the group stage. Everyone flaming him for Kaisa Turbo in diving into the teams. But he ends the main stage here, getting the team to finals with the pick on the Kale, lands the snare. No ulti comes down from the shy. He gets hooked in, knocked up, and the fight is over. And not only do they get to the final, they knock out the defending world champions. IG, they were getting in form. People were starting to get very scared whenever they saw IG on the rift. But FPX in all the games control IG, they control the aggression and get to play on their terms. In this weekend's Tournament of Champions, the Elite Four, the Final Four, the summer split number one seeds from Europe, China, and Korea. Invictus was one of the odd ones out. Oh. Chain of Corruption was fantastic. Fun Plus have delivered. And the three pre-tournament favorites are now the only three remaining teams at Worlds 2019. Well-deserved win from FPX. We're at a loss for words because of how IG went out in those last few fights. Yeah, exactly. They lost every single fight here in the end. FPX, team fighting so well. And what I love especially is when someone on that team says go, every single yep. member instantly going in. Everyone can engage in the fight here. Everyone can actually be the carry. LWX on the virus ended up being the one to start the last one here, but multiple other members, especially Tian on the Gragas, had so many key moments. 169 game deaths across four games. Invictus are eliminated, and they were one of the surprise contenders in the semifinals, dare I say, coming into Worlds after seeing their gauntlet run. Uh, I think a lot of people are pleasantly surprised to see them stepping up on the big stage. 
but they were outclassed today by FPX in, in nearly every way. League of Legends, at its core, a team game here. And the better team winning today, the coordination on display, yep. the planning on display, and in the end, the team fight execution as well. I'm also such a fan that FPX did it in their style, in their way. Roaming Rumble, Nautilus Mid. <laughs> Doin B is one of the most talked about mid laners right now and will continue to do so. And finding a player who can play at this level here mechanically, not necessarily beat the guy he's against, but then he's able to match at least, and then he sees the openings. He calls it for his team. It's very hard to find a player who can do that. Beautiful, beautiful performance. We are getting ready for an interview with Tian. So once we have it set up, we'll head over. And of course, uh, it's just the, I love the line, snaps his fingers and the, the last remaining <laughs> LPL team in IG are eliminated. But there is a beauty in this weekend that all three Summer Split champions are now the only <laughs> three remaining. Anyways, that does it for us here for more FPX's win. Let's have a Shocks and Tian on stage. FPX makes it to the finals. Now, from a spectator perspective, this was one of the most interesting and exciting series to watch. But what do you think was the reason why FPX was stronger than the world champion IG today? Today's 打团的时候都非常的集中，我觉得我们打团的时候赢的是很多的。First off, I think our level ones were a lot better. We were able to catch him out multiple times in that period, and then I also felt like our team fights were very successful. We were stronger than them in those team fights. You looked fantastic, and Tian, I have to commend your personal performance and your personal journey so far in making it to the World Championship Final in your very first world. What does it mean to you to get that milestone in your first time here at Worlds? For you yourself, you can win the first time to win the world championship, and then continue to win the world championship. For you yourself, what does it mean to you? I think our team did very well. Although I was the first time, we were the first time to win the world championship, but I think 就算有压力的话，我们压力也都克服掉了，然后我们发挥得非常好。I think our team did very well. For all of us, this was the first time at Worlds. Even though there was a lot of pressure, we were able to overcome all that pressure to perform. It is incredible how you guys have performed so far. Now on the road to the Summoners Cup. Two possible teams stand in front of you, G2 Esports or SKT. When you look at those opponents, what do you think of your chances of lifting that Summoner's Cup in a week? Uh, when he looks at the opponents in SKT and G2 possibly, what does he think the chances are of FPX hoisting that Summoner's Cup? SKT G2, FPX I, I don't know about our chances, but I hope it's G2 that we face because this is Europe's home court, and at the end of it, I want the crowd to be silent and look at G, uh, look at FPX win the championship. Have you guys heard that? I love the fighting words, but now that you knocked out IG, all the hope of LPL rests on your shoulders and the shoulders of the so shoulders rather of FPX. What can you say to assure the LPL fans that the Summoners Cup is going back to China again this year? I don't have the most confidence right now, but we will try our absolute best and we will make this finals extremely exciting. Fantastic. Can't wait for it. Congratulations to Tian and F.
FTX for making it to the World Championship Final.